everyone. This is Scott Benjamin with Fun Spot Manufacturing, and this is Tuesday Town Hall, the Adventure Park podcast. Thanks for taking some time to be with us today. Uh, today, I have Patrick Buher from Mountain Air in Bend, Oregon. Uh, he's the owner operator of the park. Uh, Patrick, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Scott. Glad to be here. Yeah, really, really glad. We had a, a good time just catching up a little bit uh, before we hit the record button. Um, so I want to go ahead and just uh, really jump right in and let you begin telling a little bit about your story and just talk about how the, you know, the last six, seven months have uh, affected you and your business and, and kind of what, how we got to today. Great. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Um, like for everybody in the trampoline park industry, this has been a pretty turbulent year and um, kudos to uh, everybody that's been able to stick through it and, and make it work. So we were um, closed for a three month period by order of our state government. We're located in Bend, Oregon, and we closed from mid-March to early June. We opened, reopened early June um, with 50% uh, reduced capacity and a mandate that everybody in the park has to wear a mask, even while jumping for ages five and older, okay. except while eating and drinking. So pretty stringent conditions here. Yes. Albeit, um, you know, our goal has been um, to break even for the year and we'll hit that goal. Excellent. So uh, I, I think there's a number of things that we've learned along the way uh, that really make a difference in achieving that goal. So uh, that's what I'd like to share today, Scott. With yeah, you. no, that, that's great. So, um, so you kind of were probably teetering uh, on like, you know, what's the state going to do? And then in, in, in March, right, they said, Okay, you've got to close. Maybe just briefly tell me a little bit, kind of what were those three months like, you know, for your staff, for, for you? Did you have to let them go? Were you able to get most of them back? Sure, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stories in there with uh, early closure and uh, PPP and EIDL. And, you know, we should actually talk about how we've been able to use some of that funding later, but that's a different story. Sure. Uh, if we have time, I think we can talk about okay. those government uh, programs, if you will. But anyways, we... Um, early March when the news cycle really started up with COVID, we didn't have any government, government mandates yet. Um, but there was a lot of fear, and rightfully so. The news mm -hmm. cycle was pretty tough and um, our attendance went way down before any mandates came out. Okay. So like a lot of um, parks, we were trying to figure out what do we do? And so we started offering camps, you know, highly sanitized, low volume camps. Um, and they never really took off. We spent a lot of money on labor, programming, everything. You know, we put this out about oh, four days advance notice saying, all right, next week we're going to do these camps, great price, so on and so forth. I think we had about six people show up mm -hmm. <laughs> in advance, um, and then nobody showed up day of. So that was, that was tough. We did it for the week. We honored our commitment to those campers that signed up for the week and said, well, that's, that's a good learning. And then the next week, uh, we got the shutdown notice. So state of Oregon um, closed all our type of businesses and restaurants, bars, everything. And that closure stayed in effect for three months till June. Early June, we were able to reopen, uh, again, with what I shared earlier about the mask mandate for everybody indoors. Right. And it's been, it's been okay. The first couple months, um, June, July, August, we're, you know, let's call it in the red. And, um, you know, we're, we're coming back up now to where in the black. And that's, that's great uh, news. I mean, no, that's, that's super encouraging. And I, I know that, you know, you know, there are states where some parks aren't open even yet. Um, right. So to know that there is a, a path that, that takes you from, from, from low to high, at least it's kind of up and to the right at whatever angle it can be. That's, that's really encouraging. So I'm glad to hear that. So good for you guys. And so what's really interesting is what we learned along the way. So I shared the story about just the camps. Um, and, and I'll say what, just to sum it up, price elasticity versus service offering elasticity. And what that means is our customers are very price uh, sensitive. If we raise the price, attendance goes down. If we drop the price, attendance goes up even during COVID times. Wow. Um, so I shared the story about camp. That was a new service offering. We gave it three days, advance notice. Uh, it never really took off. Um, we have a different offering called Kids Night Out. 
And on kids' night out, um, it's, it's parents' night out, kids' night out. Uh, they drop their kids off age six to 12, and they can leave them there for three hours. It started slow every Friday night, started slow, and then built, built, built. To, it has become one of our most uh, successful nights out that we do. But if we base it on just that first month, mm-hmm. um, I, I would have killed it right away. But right. we stayed the course with it, stayed committed to it. We got good feedback from the people that uh, knew about it. And we knew that we just had to get the word out. So the service offerings just take time to build. If you believe in it and think it's something that you can do really well, and mm-hmm. you're getting good reception from your customers, then just ramp up the marketing and stay the course with it. Um, we never gave the camps time to do that. Um, it wasn't something our customers looked expected from us or looked to us for. And I think that's why it just never took off. Right. If we had just kept marketing for, you know, weeks, months, I think we could build it up. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't restarted the camps just because it's so off from our normal, normal service offering. Um, we haven't restarted those, but our nights out, like kids night out and so on, uh, cosmic nights, yeah. those we've started back up and they do really well. Now, price elasticity. I think the, um, the most important thing with reopening for us was to let people know that we are open. And so we did a number of things. I think one of the best was just a big banner up that said we're in the front of our building. But we also did a, um, you know, we, we didn't know which day exactly we could reopen. We weren't sure up until about 48 hours before the actual reopening date. Right. And what we did was we did a big social media campaign, free first day. We're reopening everybody free for everybody that signs up online. Right. In advance. Yeah. We sold out in 45 minutes. And so customers are watching. They know, you know, that was social media and email. And um, first day free, 45 minutes sold out, albeit that was at, you know, 50% reduced capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, book online in advance, it, it worked. We did the second day at 50% off. You know, we put that out the next day. Right. And that all sold out within, you know, one hour of putting it up. And that was at 50% off. Uh, so price, it does make a difference. And, you know, sacrifice those two days. It was like, what the heck? We've been closed for three months anyways. Right, right. What's a couple extra days? Yeah, let, let me pause you and ask something. So for the three months that were your, you were closed, how were you engaging your social media? Were you fairly regularly putting a post once a week, every two weeks? Or, or, or were you emailing your, your customers during that time? We, we stayed light. Light, um, okay. We stayed light because, you know, like a lot of things today, there, there, there's two sides mm-hmm. and there's some people that felt one way, others felt different way. And, you know, we tried to just put up um, feel good messages, other things to do, right? Yeah. You live in a beautiful place in Bend, Oregon. And we posted, here's some things to do during a COVID lockdown, out yeah. hiking and nature shots and put those up. So we yeah. tried to stay engaged on social media, but kept it light. We didn't want to put anything about, you know, come and jump with us when we reopen or any of those types of things. No. People had strong feelings about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we still, as a manufacturer, kind of struggle with that tension of, you know, when is it time to, you know, really, really sell, you know, versus, you know, just do what we're doing right. here. And that's just kind of share value and add value to, to people's lives. But I think it's important. And then what I wanted to kind of highlight from that is, and I, and I want to continue to say this to our, to those that are listening is the more you can stay engaged on social media. Again, it doesn't have to be a come jump with us, you know, hard sell, but just, you know, something encouraging a uh, picture of a sunset, you know uh, you know, go meditate or you know, whatever, all those things help that they do help eventually when you do come and you're ready to open, people are listening, you know, and, and so they're ready to engage. And, and I think your story is a great example that, that people, I mean, they acted immediately and, and came out. It works. They're watching, especially when you see free. Now, yeah. let me actually, just on that topic of uh, market, something that we've been doing, again, because some people, if we send out a general blast on our email, you know, we get some, I'll call it hate mail back. You shouldn't be open. You're causing, you know, lots of problems by being open and so on and so forth. And I respect people's feelings in that direction. Um, so we're careful with our general blasts or general social media posts. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But what we hit hard is uh, targeted marketing. So we segment our customer base into those that have come in during COVID, you know, from June 1st, yeah. we know everybody that's come in and we're hitting them with offers, right? Because we know that they're open to being out in the public during these yeah. times. So anybody that we know has come in, is comfortable with coming in, we're going to just keep hitting them with good offers, uh, yeah. you know, relevance often. Yeah. Yeah. And we're smart careful tactic. with our broadcast. Yeah. Smart tactic. That's great. So just to close on the big learning from the last six months, mm -hmm. um, there's actually a lot, but this one just really stood out to me is yeah. um, make sure people know you're there. You know, I think for those that haven't reopened yet, consider doing a um, free day on reopening day one. Um, and just remember that service offerings are not very elastic, meaning if you're going to do something new, you, you have to do it well in advance. Um, in terms of marketing and stay the course with that offering for at least a couple of months before you decide if it's going to work or not. But price, as soon as you make a price change, <laughs> you know, 45 minutes later, you're going to have instant results. Yeah. That, that was so my where, opinion. where have you landed today on your, we'll say your price per hour versus where you were in January? We've kept it the same. So you're, you're, you're back at that same level. Our strategy on price is, to try not to discount, you know, put away that reopening stuff. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is add more value, right? So keep our price per hour the same, mm -hmm. but maybe instead, um, you know, we charge $12 for one hour of jumping. Mm -hmm. But what we'll do is run a special such as play all day, where for $17, mm -hmm. you get unlimited jumping for the day. Right. Um, We'll kind of um, do the same thing by saying, all right, if you bring three people or four, four jumpers in, you can have a uh, price of three. Mm -hmm. so it's another way of discounting. What we want to do is capture all those dollars, though, and yeah. give them value. No, I, I think that's a very important strategy. Um, once you start discounting, it's hard to get out of that cycle. It is. Very it's hard to get out of that cycle. Yep. People are looking for those 50% off coupons or, you know, $3 off and, I don't want to do that. I'd rather give away other stuff, give away yeah. free stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Add, yeah. Uh, you know, adding a, a soda or something costs you very little, but has a lot of value to that customer. Exactly. So, especially if you're capturing that 12, full $12. And customers actually, we, we get great feedback, especially on the, you know, for the price of an hour, jump all day for free. Right. We have to be careful what days we offer that on, of course. Right. Right. Uh, right. But customers love just getting that extra value. They still feel like they're getting a deal. And that's what they want is just value. It's that's not right. savings, saving $2. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what are, what, are, what are one or two things that you're doing you know, today post reopening that you, you weren't doing in your park um, back in January, February timeframe? Oh boy. Um, I, I'd say we're, really it's on the marketing side. We've just had to be, really smart navigating with marketing, as I shared earlier, right? We're doing much more refined segmentation, you know, how we do birthday parties, um, how we market birthday parties and so on. It's just much more refined. Our targeting mm -hmm. is much more refined. Um, in terms of our service offerings, um, we've changed our service offerings because so many kids are doing virtual school. Mm -hmm our daytime business has actually gone up. Oh, wow. Our dollars per hour midday are, are like this compared to this. In the past. <laughs> right. And so we've just um, had to get smart about how we make people aware of that. So our, our service hours, uh, service offerings, you know, a few more nights, nights out, but we haven't necessarily changed um, attractions or, or mm -hmm. things like that in the park yet. You know, yeah. I, I see, as things start to open up more, um, you know, and unfortunately, the number of options for kids to go do things has gone down because mm -hmm. some businesses have not made it, you know, different businesses here within our local community. Right. And so I think we'll be hitting it hard as soon as things start to reopen with new investment in additional attractions or different things that, you know, we can offer. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's going to, when it opens and it will open, <laughs> I think the opportunities are going to be great for those that have, have stuck through and, and made some, some really 
wise choices, which uh, it, it sounds like you have, and, and that's awesome. Um, so what's, what's uh, you know, for you personally, what's uh, kind of one, one big learning lesson, thing that you, you'll take with you um, in the future uh, from this time? Oh boy, you know, I, I think it's a lot about just the community relations. Um, oh, that's great. And just, you know, it's so divided right now in terms of what people's opinions are. And we just have to know what's important to us in terms of uh, what our values are as a park and what service we're trying to offer mm -hmm. and share that with, um, you know, it's, it's the same story to people that feel that one thing and people that feel another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we, we offer a good service. We're going to be open. Um, we are keeping people safe. We've reduced our capacity. Uh, we do, we're doing everything we can um, to have a, a, a safe offering. And so it's actually been a good, not just a good story, but a, uh, a good thing to share with customers that feel all different ways. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it, it, it's a tough one to navigate. I'm even finding myself hesitant on this call to, you know, really share everything because I know people of different persuasions listen to uh, sure podcast, but yeah, it's, it's just know what's uh, important to your park and keep sharing that story. Yeah, that's great. Well, you've got a, got a great story to share and uh, I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day today to, to get on with, uh, with us and to, to share with those that are listening, other uh, park owners uh, literally around the world who, you know, kind of take note and, and um, you know, try and add some value to their day. So I appreciate you being with me today. Great, thank you, Scott. I'd like to thank Patrick Buher of Mountain Air in Bend, Oregon for taking a few minutes out of his day to be with us today. Uh, thanks again, Patrick, for being with us. And if you are an owner operator or general manager listening to this and uh, you'd like to uh, take a few minutes out of your day to share your story uh, with the rest of the listeners on the Tuesday Town Hall podcast, would love for you to get in touch. Uh, you can reach me at scott.benjamin at funspot.com. That's scott.benjamin at funspot.com um, or just connect with us through our website at funspot.com uh, and the contact us form and uh, I'll get in touch with you and schedule some time uh, to record. So again, thanks for listening to the Tuesday Town Hall. Hope that you find this helpful and that you'll share it on your social media platforms. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.